Jimmy Johnson adds some marquee races to his schedule, and he, along with Chad Canales and Donnie Allison, are set to go into the NASCAR Hall of Fame this week. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Below the Line podcast presented by Wicked Mix and Wicked Mini. He's got a special promo code for you guys right now. If you call 501-374-2244, again, 501-374-2244, you can get 10% off your order of Wicked Mix and Wicked Minis when you tell them about the Below the Line podcast and code BTYL10. Again, that's 501-374-2244. You can also order off MoonlightMixes.com. You won't get the promo code there, but if you want to go there, See what you want and then call 501-374-2244 and use code BTYL10. You can certainly do that as well to get 10% off your order of Wicked Mix and Wicked Minis. Got a lot to talk about uh, on this show today, and and I'm excited about this show uh, because it, it's not a show that I'm going to have to just put a ton of work into. It's a show where we can just kind of chill and talk, right? We only got two big stories, and one today, I just realized we kind of had a um, a slip up from Joey Cohen when you're we talking to him uh, on on last Thursday night. The show I'm recording it on Tuesday. It's going to come out Wednesday. Um, but he he was talking and he said it's going to be a lot of fun to see Jimmy Johnson at the Daytona 500. And what I didn't realize is that that wasn't public info yet. I assumed Jimmy Johnson was going to run the Daytona 500. I think a lot of other people assumed that Jimmy Johnson was going to run the Daytona 500 as well. But it, it was not public info yet. And so we we are kind of the first outlet to report that. That's pretty cool. Some exclusivity for you guys here on, on Below the Line, uh, which hasn't happened before. Um, but Jimmy Johnson will run the Daytona 500. He will also run the championship race at Phoenix, and he will also run the Brickyard 400. So he's now up to nine races. He's also racing at Kansas, the Coke 600, uh, Dover, I think Las Vegas, the Fall Vegas race, and I think a road course somewhere in there as well. Um Really cool to see him back, but uh, the one thing that I uh, that he should be careful of, y'all all know the saying, people remember you for the last thing you do, right? And uh, Jimmy Johnson didn't end his career on a high note. Seven-time champ, 83-time cup race winner, that's great, but uh, he 2020 missed the playoffs, 2019 missed the playoffs as well, missed the playoffs his last two years. Last year did not go well for him on the part-time basis. IndyCar was what we expected. It, it didn't go great for Jimmy, but but nobody expected it to, right? So um, he needs to be careful um, about having this be really bad. And, and that, I didn't say that very well. What, what I mean is he... He really needs to run well. I've seen, I saw Black Flags Matter put out that he thinks he's going to win. So I don't know if he's going to win. Daytona probably his best shot at a super speedway, right? Where the draft is the great equalizer. But um, I don't, Leg- Legacy Motor Club might add the speed. They're going to have to overcome some hurdles with, with Toyota coming on. Always rough when you got a new body or a new manufacturer and you're trying to get, get your feet under you, right? Get your feet wet with them. Um, I could see Jimmy turning in a top 10, maybe. You know, Dover, all you know, eleven wins there. Uh, you know, he he when you beat a Richard Petty record, it's pretty good. I think Petty had ten there and Johnson at eleven. Um Kansas, Charlotte, he he's all he's going to tracks he's really good at. And then uh obviously Daytona won two Daytona five hundreds. If he wins a third Daytona five hundred, he would really go up in my, you know, me thinking maybe of him as the GOAT. I still greatest driver of all time to me is Richard Petty. Most talented all time is probably Dale Earnhardt. Uh, best driver, Dale Earnhardt. Greatest is is probably Richard Petty. Jimmy's up there. He's my number five guy just because, you know, the chase and, and all that. But um, in a lot of people's minds, a third Daytona 500 win, and we had this conversation last year as well, but a third Daytona 500 win would only further cement his legacy as one of the best of all time. We, he is one of the best of all time. There's no denying that. But uh, a third Daytona 500 win would would help his resume out a little bit. Um, but the Brickyard 400, I think he only won that race once. Did he win it? No way. I can't remember. I think he won it once. Maybe twice. I can't remember, but another Brickyard 400 in the return of the Brickyard 400. Think of what that would do. A 12th win at Dover. A win in the Coke 600. So he's running three crown jewels, and then he's running the championship race. 
as well, which for the first time last year, we saw a non-championship four driver win that race. And I don't think he's going to be very competitive there. You know, he'll probably run around 20th, 25th there, but he's just hoping to complete some laps. Coda last year, remember, got taken out lap one, involved in a wreck late the Daytona 500. Um, I think he ran one more race, and I don't remember what happened to him in that one, but he's just looking to, to you know, he's not looking to log laps for experience. He's just hoping to get his feet under him and and go out there, maybe have a have a chance at the win. I do think Daytona is his best shot. He will have to race his way in, though. He's not guaranteed in. We we have now, I believe, four open entries, the 78, the 62, the 60, and uh, Jimmy Johnson as open entries for the Daytona 500. Colleg, 2311, possibly a third car. Same thing for FRM. We haven't heard anything there. The money team may be coming back. You know, we don't know anything about that. So the Daytona 500 this year is a lot more storylines than it has had in the last few years, you know, ever since the uh, the advent of the charter system and all that. So uh, a lot of good talking points there. But Jimmy Johnson running two crown duels and then the championship, uh, which obviously is, you know, aside from Daytona, probably the biggest race on the schedule because it's, well, it's the championship. Um, and speaking of Jimmy Johnson, you know, we just talked about his legacy, his resume. Uh, one thing that is that is already on his resume is the NASCAR Hall of Fame. And, uh, and, and well, not officially yet. He's not been officially inducted. But he will be later this week. I believe Friday evening it airs on Peacock, I think 8, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, he, along with longtime crew chief Chad Knauss, who I believe was with him from... I want to say 2002 to 2017 or 18. I think that's right. Um, they won a slew of races together. And actually, I think Canals was suspended for Johnson's first win or suspended for a big run of his in the chase or something. They, anyway, they won seven championships together. They won a crap ten of races together. One of the best driver crew chief crews of all time. Again, I kind of feel like Richard Petty and Dale Inman have to take that spot. Dale Earnhardt worked with a variety of crew chiefs, but certainly then you have Ray Evernham and Jeff Gordon. Uh, but Jimmy and Chad are uh, undoubtedly one of you know the greatest driver crew chief duos of all time. They were dominant, unstoppable. When it got to the chase, they were downright nasty. Like they just, it was incredible. I mean, the Alabama Crimson Tide of NASCAR thought it out five straight championships, no matter the format, we're never going to see that again. I don't think. Of course, after Yarborough got three in a row, everybody said we'd never see that again either. And Jimmy shattered that. So who knows? Um, they're also going in. Can't forget the third guy, member of the Alabama gang, Donnie Allison. Uh, I guess it'll it'll have already happened by the time y'all are seeing this, you're listening to this, but go rewatch it. We live streamed on the evening of the 16th, the 1979 Daytona 500, which is probably Donnie Allison's most favorite, m most uh, famous moment, similar to Kelly Yarborough, who... You know, two great drivers, Yarborough, a three-time champion. He won 83 races. Donnie Allison only won 10 races at the cup level, but still won on some big tracks, Daytona, Talladega, the like. Never got the Daytona 500, although 1979 was his closest chance. And uh, it's funny to me that Yarborough and Donnie Allison, I, I don't think Bobby Allison, but those two for sure, their most iconic moment in NASCAR history, the most iconic moment in NASCAR history is defined by a loss rather than a win. And that is kind of funny to me. It's also kind of sad that people don't remember, especially Donnie Allison. Uh, you know, he might have only won 10 races. Everybody always says his brother and then later his nephew, Davey, kind of outshine him. And, you know, maybe that's true. Uh, but Donnie's a great guy. Um, I was talking with NASCAR historian Ken Martin back in September and texting with him a few weeks ago. And he said he was really excited to talk to Donnie. He'd already been doing some interview stuff for Donnie, helping put together his Hall of Fame video here that you'll see. Um, and uh, just a great guy. Ten wins in the Cup Series. Not many drivers ever get one, let alone multiple, let alone ten. So congrats. Well earned for, for all three, uh, especially Jimmy Johnson, Chad Knauss. But do not discount uh, Donnie Allison, a great driver, 10 wins. Again, uh, that is a really impressive mark. Uh, one last plug here before we sign off. You can join our Patreon today for just $4 a month to further support the show. Head on over to patreon.com backslash below the online podcast and pledge your first $4 today. We'll also have exclusive content coming out there, behind the scenes stuff, early access to stuff uh, if y'all want that. But there's no one pledge yet. So pledge is $4, guys, $4 a month. Really support me. Help the channel, help make the show better. 
So I think that's all I have for you guys. Again, uh, MoonlightMixes.com to get your Wicked Mix and Wicked Mini. See what you want there and then call 501 501- 374-2244 to get 10% off and use code BTYL10. Again, that's code BTYL10. Phone number 501-374-2244. You can find us on YouTube at Below the Align, Spotify, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts. We're there. Google Podcasts, which I think is now YouTube Music. Um, so you can find us all on those places. Thank you guys for watching, listening. You can also email us below the Atlanta podcast at gmail.com. That's all lowercase below the Atlanta podcast at gmail.com. I am Samuel Subs from the Below the Atlanta podcast and the Below the Atlanta YouTube channel. I will see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.